Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers also twisted together a crown of thorns, put it on his head, and clothed him in a purple robe. And they kept coming up to him and saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and were slapping his face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I'm bringing him out to you to let you know I find no grounds for charging him. Then Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the temple servants saw him, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! Pilate responded, Take him and crucify him yourselves, since I find no grounds for charging him. We have a law, the Jews replied to him, and according to that law he ought to die because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was more afraid than ever. He went back into the headquarters and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus did not give him an answer. So Pilate said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Don't you know that I have the authority to release you and the authority to crucify you? You would have no authority over me at all, Jesus answered him, if it hadn't been given you from above. This is why the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. From that moment, Pilate kept trying to release him. But the Jews shouted, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Anyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside. He sat down on the judge's seat in a place called the Stone Pavement, but an Aramaic, Gabbatha. It was the preparation day for the Passover, and it was about noon. Then he told the Jews, Here is your king. They shouted, Take him away! Take him away! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Should I crucify your king? We have no king but Caesar, the chief priests answered. Then he handed him over to be crucified. Then they took Jesus away. Carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called Place of the School, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and two others with him, one on either side with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had a sign made and put on the cross. It said, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read the sign because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and it was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, don't write the King of the Jews, but that he said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate replied, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, a part for each soldier. They also took the tunic, which was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see who gets it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled that says, They divided my clothes among themselves, and they cast lots for my clothing. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple he loved standing there, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his home. After this, when Jesus knew that everything was now finished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, he said, I'm thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was sitting there. So they fixed a sponge full of sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it up to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. Then bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Since it was the preparation day, the Jews did not want the bodies to remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath was a special day. They requested that Pilate have the men's legs broken and their bodies be taken away. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man and of the other one who had been crucified with him. When they came to Jesus, they did not break his legs, since they saw that he was already dead. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you may also believe. His testimony is true, and he knows he is telling the truth. For these things happen so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. Also another scripture says, they will look at the one they pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might remove Jesus' body. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and took his body away. Nicodemus, who had previously come to him at night, also came, bringing a mixture of about 75 pounds of myrrh and aloes. They took Jesus' body and wrapped it in linen cloths with the fragrant spices according to the burial custom of the Jews. There was a garden in the place where he was crucified. A new tomb was in the garden. No one had yet been placed in it. They placed Jesus there because of the Jewish day of preparation. 
and since the tomb was nearby.